Welcome to the Week 18 Slate Breakdown for lineups.com. I am Jason Gill, but with me here is Patrick Monin, Jacob Wayne, and that is going to be the Rams and Seahawks. Uh, this is just kind of a simple spot for the Seahawks. Uh, you win and you're in. Um, otherwise, that Lions and Packers game is going to be, you know, super fun. Um, we'll talk about that one on another video, but... This one's going to be an interesting spot here. Um, I mean, we saw this game played, what, a few weeks ago, and, and, you know, Seahawks were absolutely smashed. We've kind of seen a little bit of a resurgence from the Rams. Um, I mean, they're playing some some quality football down the stretch. Baker Mayfield's look good. Uh, Jacob, we'll start with you. Six-point spread here. I This is a Seahawks team we backed early in the year quite a bit, and, you know, obviously over the last, you know, eight games or so, not quite the same team that we saw earlier in the year. Um, are you backing the Rams to cover? Yeah, I am. Um, I do like the Rams here. Uh, I, we talked about it a couple of times. The, the backups on this roster are better than most other teams' backups, I think. And I think you've seen that bear out. Um, aside from that last game last week, um, I was on the Rams. Kind of instantly regretted it when I saw Joey Bosa was playing. And the Chargers, the Chargers defense is really improving and one of the best in the league. But that's a different conversation. Um, for this game, though, the Seahawks defense is so putrid, I think. Um, Mike White was not healthy last week and couldn't take advantage of it, sadly, but Baker Mayfield can. Um, I think he's really gotten a grasp of this Sean McVay offense, and I think he's in a position to have some success here, especially against the Seattle defense that struggles in defending passes to tight ends and running backs. Baker Mayfield has always loved passing to his tight ends and running backs, so you're looking at guys like Tyler Higby, who has a, a nice uh, incentive here to get some extra yards. I believe he's 13 yards away from... Uh, yeah, 13 yards away from getting a $500,000 bonus here. So, nice little boost for Tyler Higby. Um, but, yeah, I think this line is probably a touch overinflated just because the Seahawks are highly motivated to win and the Rams maybe aren't. But, you know, this is still Sean McVay and a still semi-talented Rams team who are going to be looking to play spoiler against the Seahawks here. I think the Seahawks come out a little bit tighter. Um, I think the Rams could even win this game outright. I wouldn't be shocked. Um, something I'm doing is I'm putting a half unit on the on a Rams money line, Lions money line parlay. Um, just a little fumbling because that's what the Lions need to make the playoffs and, you know, hoping they can do so. Um, we find out the Lions in there. But, yeah, over, overall, I think this is going to be a, a tighter game than the Bucks are projecting at the moment. And I would take the Rams anything over six points here. Patrick? Yeah, I always like the Rams here. Um for the situational spot, like Jacob mentioned, and I also think the matchups do favor the Rams here. I think down the stretch, the Seahawks team really has become a run first offense with Kenneth Walker, and that's really the one thing the Rams have done well all season to stop the run. Um, still number one on the season in run defense according to PFF. I think the big thing for the Rams offensively here is that they themselves have gotten some sense of a run game going. Um, and I think against the Seahawks front, they're going to be able to run the ball just the same as the Seahawks defensive front that – I struggle to pass rush and a struggle to, to stop the run at times this season. Um, I think we see Cam Akers get a share here. I think they're able to move the ball on the ground and take some pressure off Baker and open things off on the perimeter. So I, I think there are matches on both sides here that, that favor this Rams team, and, and I, I also like them playing. Spoiler here, Sean McVay will love nothing more than to keep one of his divisional foes out of the playoffs. So give me the Rams. I'm I'm not going to touch the money line. I, I do really like the number at six. And I think to clarify, the, the Seahawks will also need the Packers to lose, correct, in order to make the playoffs if they win this game. I thought they or, just went in there in, because I think they're technically already the seventh seed. No, they, they still need the Packers to lose. Do they really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, them, yeah. Oh, that's right, because they were worried about the Lions. Yeah, Lions not playing their guys. That's right for some reason. Well. Uh, quick aside, I, I hate that the NFL laid, laid out the schedule this way. Um, these games should be happening at the same time, where these these teams like are relying on other results to happen. But regardless, um, worth noting here, Geno Smith does have a two million dollar incentive for the Seahawks making the playoffs, so uh, he will be a big Lions fan on Sunday Night Football. <laughs> uh, I'm on the Rams um, as well. I, I a lot of the same stuff that you guys mentioned. I just think. You know, as good as the Seattle defense was at, at a portion of the season, I mean, we, we kind of expect them to regress, and they certainly have. Um, overall, I mean, 24th in rush defense DVOA now, you know, towards the end of the year, 26 in yards per rush. Um, 
I, I, I think, like you've seen, we've seen Cam Akers just look incredibly good over the last few weeks, um, kind of really back to what we expect him to be. I, actually, even better than maybe what I expect him to be, just because I wasn't quite sure off that type of injury. Um, and you're going to be able to run on the Seahawks defense. Um, we've seen that, and I think that'll kind of be the case. And Patrick, as you mentioned, you know, if, trying to get Kenneth Walker going up against this front seven is still going to be incredibly tough to do. We've also seen the regression on the other side with the offensive line for Seattle starting to play a little bit more poorly with two of those rookie tackles and just some injuries as well, where I think that's kind of factored into Geno's game. We've seen Geno become a little bit more you know, mistake prone, I feel like, over the last few weeks, and I think that could continue here for an opportunistic secondary. Um, so yeah, I think plus six is a, is a solid number. Um, I do agree. I think there is some potential for the Rams to pull out the up uh, outright win, um, and I think this game this game definitely does come kind of come down to the wire. So it's a good spot. Uh, I think this is actually a kind of a sneaky good player prop game, except we have nothing out for us to even talk about right now. So that's a little yeah. bit of a bummer. But um, Jay, was there anyone that you're looking here that maybe isn't mentioned or someone you're leaning towards? No, hey B, like I mentioned. Um the Seahawks are one of the, maybe the worst tight end defense in the league. Um, I think DK Metcalf could have a pretty good game. Uh, I think you know this, this Rams secondary is really running out of games outside of Jalen Ramsey, so I, I think Metcalf could be pretty successful here. Um, but yeah, I kind of I kind of like the over in this game. Honestly, I, I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I feel like this is a sneaky over game where the Rams offense is undervalued in the market right now because they just played the Chargers, who are becoming one of the best defenses in the league. Seahawks much worse defensively, and I think the Seahawks defense might be overvalued um, after limiting the Jets last week, but to me that had more to do with Mike White's limitations off the injury than it did their defense. Yeah, I'm kind of with you just because I, I know the Seahawks have played a couple of lower scoring games, but uh, I mean that Chiefs game, I mean just... You know, obviously disappointing. It was a disappointing Geno game, but you know, San Francisco on a short week, we kind of expected that. But otherwise, I, I definitely can kind of see both these, these teams getting into the 20s. Um, I mean, Rams Rams have been, I mean, obviously the big blow up against Denver. I mean, you mentioned it last week against the Chargers. Chargers defense has really turned a corner. Um, and then the fact that, you know, it was, what, road game against Green Bay. I mean, this is just a better spot for, I feel like, the offense to start clicking against a, a bottom-tier defense. So I'm, I'm with you. Um, and I also think, you know, with Tyler Lockett back for, for Seattle, that opens up that offense so much more where I feel like that was another key reason why they why they struggled over the last few weeks. So, um, yeah, I certainly don't mind the over in the spot. One other thing I wanted to know is if you're still concerned about motivational aspects for the Rams, um, Bobby Wagner's been talking about how he wants to spoil the Seahawks' playoff chances and, and he wants to face the team that gave up on him and ruin their season and, and all that stuff. So he's really become the, the, the backbone of this team this season uh, as everything else has kind of fallen apart around him. And, I mean, he's the kind of leader of that defense at least. And, yeah, I, I think he'll have this team kind of fired up for this game. So, Patrick, any final thoughts? Yeah, I would agree with you guys on the over. I, I still thought the Rams were able to move the ball against that Chargers defense. So um, just didn't really convert it into points. And obviously the uh, the weakness of that Chargers defense is still the run defense. That's where the Rams were able to get going. Um, but that's also a weakness of the Seahawks defense. I also think their secondary is significantly worse off than the Chargers secondary. So I think they'll be able to have some more versatility in how they move the ball here. So I would agree with you. And then, yeah, Cam Akers for, for player props in this one. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I love these teams playing spoiler this week. I, I think there's not really inflation by the books, but there, there can be some, you know, near game time inflation on, you know, it's just spots where, where people assume that, oh, this team needs X game, this team's playing for nothing. Um, you know, that's that's the team you should back. When you really boil it down, a lot of these teams just love playing spoiler, I think. They're, it's very rare in the NFL where you get to play as loose as some of these teams are going to get to play this weekend, especially knowing that you enter the offseason next week. And I think there's there's some value in that, just looking at the human element of it. So I think that that can explain why we're on a decent amount of dogs this week. Yep, for sure. Um, yeah, that's going to wrap it up for this game. Um, that's it for us. We're going to wrap it up a relatively short week 18 Sunday sleep breakdown. There's plenty of content up on lineups at the moment uh, to get ahead for week 18 as, as well as some of the stuff for the wild card round already and then if you're new to Ohio sports betting you can head over to our Ohio sports betting page and get up to date on some of the new user promos and be able to sign up there and uh, until then we'll see you next time